Hi, you're with Chandi, Bad Goodly once again, and in this video, I'm going to talk about that how can you change a measure using a slicer. Now, this is the question that I get a lot, and maybe I thought I'll just do a quick video on that to explain how that is done. Now, before I start, I want you to explain the data model first. So, I have a very simple data model here. Uh, I have a sales table and I have a calendar table and that is kind of linked using the date column and pretty standard columns in the sales table you can see we have a date, price, product and the number of units linked with the calendar table like that. Now that I have kind of created a little pivot table here in the pivot table I have actually calculated, pre-calculated four different measures so you can just take a look at the formulas here that I've used for total sales I've used a sumx function for total units is nothing but the sum of the units column for transactions is nothing but the count of the sales table unique selling days is nothing but the distinct count of the date in the sales table so these are pretty standard calculations and what I've done is I've placed all of these calculations inside of my pivot table now here is what I am looking forward to do I'd like to have a slicer right here on my screen in the slicer I want the ability to pick up any four of these calculations and only that calculation should then appear in my pivot table so if I change the calculation in the slicer the calculation should just be devised to that calculation that is selected by me or the user that's what I'm planning to do now in order to achieve this we actually need three things and that's how we're gonna proceed in this video the first thing that we would need is of course we would need a slicer the second thing that we would need is when the user actually clicks a particular value in the slicer we need the ability to capture the value selected by the user right so that's number two and the final part that we need is we need a dynamic calculation that actually replaces the value in the pivot table so it dynamically calculates whatever the user has selected and places that inside of my pivot table so three things we need slicer the ability to capture the value you selected in the slicer and a dynamic calculation all right so let's just start with creating a slicer first now I'm sure you already know about it but slicers can be created on a column of a table so I need to have actually a physical table in my data model here and I need to have one single column over there and in that column I need to show kind of four values I need to show like a text written total sales total units transactions and unique selling days I need to have that as a column so what I'm gonna do is in the modeling tab I can just maybe go to the new table and start making a table but I've already made that table so I'm just gonna show you that table so here is a table that I have made which is called as a slicer table Note that this is actually a table, not a measure, not a column, all right? A table that I have made. Now, there are different ways of making a table. You can either make it through Power Query, just type the data, or maybe get it through Excel, but I'm using the simplest way, we're using DAX. So I start my table by writing the name of the table, which is slicer table. Start by curly brackets, and I write four values here, total sales, total units, transactions, and unique selling days, all in double quotes separated by a comma each and then I close the curly bracket and this gives me an actual table so curly brackets actually mean that you're trying to create a table and then you separate the rows of the table by a comma all right so let's just take a look at the table that we have created using this little DAX here so this is the table that I get I have four values and now that I have a table and I have a column I can actually make a slicer on that so I'm just gonna maybe come back here and maybe pick up a slicer and just drag the value column in that right so I have value now value sounds like a bad name here so I'm just gonna maybe make it more intuitive and write select a measure or maybe select a calculation all right now that we are done with part one we have created a slicer now we move on to part two now we need the ability to be able to capture the value that the user selects so now if you actually take a look at my slicer here when I click on transactions or units or sales nothing happens actually because I'm not even capturing that value that I'm kind of selecting in that so I need a measure for that so I'm gonna make a very simple measure which is actually user selection I'm just gonna call this measure as user selection and I'm gonna use the selected value function and I'm gonna say hey why don't you go to the slicer table in that table we just have one column called value and just pick up whatever the user has selected so the selected value function is only going to show you the value selected if there is only one value so that is what it is going to do so now if I just maybe real quick test this user selection function so maybe I can just draw up a card so I just draw up a big card and I drag user selection right here and you can see that since my total sales is selected I get to see my total sales here and if I maybe select total units I get to see total units here let me just also make the slicer small and unique selling days 
and transactions. Just in case if I kind of not check any value here, this actually shows me a blank. That's an alternative value that shows up in case nothing is selected or even if two values are selected. All right. So yeah, this works absolutely fine. Now that we have moved on from part two and we have captured the value which is being selected in the slicer, I need a dynamic calculation that actually, you know, sees this selection that the user has made and then in the pivot table places transactions or whatever the user has selected. So I have made another measure called calculation and I'm just going to show that to you. So in the calculation measure, I use the switch function, which is like an if function, but better. So in the switch function, I say that uh, you look out for a condition called true condition, like wherever the condition becomes true. So you see that if the user selection is equal to total sales, the word total sales. Now, whatever you have written in the table, which was a slicer table, that text and this text that we are writing it manually here should exactly match. And if it doesn't match, it would not give you the correct answer. So if the user selection is equals to total sales, then I will run the total sales measure. You can see that I already have made these measures. So total sales, units, transactions, and unique selling days, they are already there right here. So if the user selection is equals to total sales, I run the total sales measure. I run the total units measure if that is equal to total units. And in case of transactions, I do the transactions. In case of total uh, unique selling days, I do the unique selling days. Now, just in case if the user user decides that, hey, I don't want to pick up any four of the values in the slicer and he leaves the slicer as blank, then I want to display a message, select any single calculation. That's what I do. So now I close the switch function and let's just now drag the calculation in my pivot table and let's just see what happens. All right. So since I have actually selected transactions here, so you can see that it's actually showing me transactions here and I have selected units here. So it's actually showing me units here and unique selling days. It's showing me actually unique selling days. There is also a way to kind of format that, you know, so you can see that it's showing by default two decimal places and two decimal places should only come in the case of total sales. So I can just maybe make some tweaks in my measure to just maybe make that happen. So I'm just going to come back to my measure and make the following tweak. So I'm just going to say that if I'm actually showing total sales, I would like to format total sales and show that in maybe a two decimal places. So maybe 0, 0.00. That's what I will show. So I'll just maybe close the bracket here. And if, if I'm just maybe showing unique selling days, I just want to show a single decimal place. No, as in, I don't want to show any decimal places. And you can similarly add that for units and transactions. All right. So I'm just going to maybe commit to that, press enter. Let's just see what happens. And you can see that since we have selected unique selling days here in the slicer and the calculation is now showing up no decimals. And if I end up selecting total sales, it actually starts to show me two decimals. You can also add commas and stuff like that. Maybe I can just show that to you as well. So in case you are a formatting frenzy, maybe what you can do is something like that. I hope that should work. Yep, that works. So 0, 0, 0.00. So 0, 0.00 actually stands for the decimal. 0, 0, stands for the commas. All right. All right. So this is good enough. I have made a measure and that measure is affecting my pivot table. And I can certainly now get rid of all of these four calculations that I had placed. So I can get rid of sales, units, transactions, and unique selling days. And I can just place my calculation here. Now, one last thing which you will definitely agree with me is that calculation is a bad header. I don't want to show calculation. I actually want to show total sales or whatever the user is selecting. Now, I don't know of a way to dynamically change the header of uh, this little pivot table right here, but I have a workaround. So what I can do is I can maybe take this total sales, make the size smaller, and I can just maybe place it on top of this calculation right here. And then when I change that, it's going to look like that the header is also being changed. So this is going to work fine. As of now, I'm just not going to do it because it just calls for a lot of formatting. But when you definitely download this uh, Power BI file, you will see that happen. So I'll just make an effort to do all of that work and give you that Power BI file for the download. All right, that was all about it. Of course, let me know if you have any questions, something that you haven't understood in this. Let me know in the comments below. I'll be happy to reply and answer them. And once again, thanks so much for watching this and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.